In our next problem, we're going to look at determining a spanning tree. Find a spanning tree for the graph shown. Now, what we notice is we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 vertices. Let's go ahead and write those vertices down without any edges to start. We're going to keep it in the same orientation. Now, in order to have a spanning tree, we're going to be looking for a subgraph that will contain all of the graph's vertices. It will be connected, but it will contain no circuits. And one thing we know is that if we have 12 vertices, then our spanning tree should have 11 edges. So usually what you're thinking about is a skeleton in relation to this tree. One thing is that you might note that we, we are going to have to have the edge from A to B. We're going to have an edge we can draw from B to C and from C to D. We'll have to have the edge from E to F because it's the only connection. We can draw an edge from F to G and G to H. And then we're going to be looking for edges that are going to connect this. And again, if you think about it as a skeleton, it kind of helps you figure out which edges to choose. We can see that the configuration of the original graph looks like this. We're going to have to have the edge from K to L. So all we really need to do is figure out how to connect to I and J. And we have a number of different routes, but if we decide to connect I to C and J to D, this would be one of the spanning trees. Now, let's just double check to make sure we have 11 edges. We'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And so here is a spanning tree for the graph.